In 1930, Heikel began development work on a new twin-engine biplane. To the watching world, it was being designed as a civil transport, but in reality, it was being developed for the Reichsmarine. They were looking for a new maritime patrol aircraft, and at the time, Heinkel was the most established name in the clandestine business of building military planes for Germany. Heinkel's new aircraft was designed as a large twin-engine attack and reconnaissance plane, which could be operated as either a land plane or a float plane. As such, two prototypes were ordered to test out both versions of this design. The float plane was designated the HE-59A, and the land plane was the HE-59B. Though the actual design of the aircraft was not cutting edge, it was appealing due to its sturdiness and relatively cheap cost. An important factor to consider when Germany, and indeed a lot of the world, was somewhat broke in 1931. Like many aircraft of this size, particularly the German ones, it had a tubular fuselage with slab sides. The twin engines were housed in a pair of nacelles outboard from the fuselage and between the wings. These were supported by struts that connected to the upper and lower wing spars. The engines themselves were 660 horsepower, 46 litre BMW V12s. The lower struts also connected to the framework that connected the twin floats or the undercarriage to the airframe. This was done to distribute the impact of landing more evenly, and in general provide a more sturdy platform. Compared to other float planes at the time, the HE-59 was rather large, with a wingspan of just under 24 meters and enough room in the fuselage to facilitate an internal bomb bay. This would allow it to carry a mixed payload of bombs or a single heavy torpedo. Aside from landing mechanism, the only difference between the two prototypes was the location of the fuel tanks. The float plane had two additional fuel tanks in the keels of the floats, whereas the land plane had to rely on just the internal tanks, though it could sacrifice space in the bomb bay for extra fuel if needed. In total, the float plane version had a standard fuel capacity of 2700 litres, and this could be brought up to 3200 litres with the addition of internal tanks. Despite being the second design, the land plane was completed first. Fitted with wheels and large streamlined fairings for the undercarriage, it made its maiden flight in September of 1931. A few months later, the float plane prototype, equipped with a pair of long single-step floats, took off in January of 1932. From the outset, the HE-59A was preferred, being more suited for maritime duties with its floats, and a small batch of additional prototypes were ordered for further evaluation. Despite the engines being considered slightly underpowered, and the aircraft's modest top speed still being a bit uncomfortable with an open cockpit, the HE-59 was deemed successful in all of its evaluation trials, and this resulted in the order of a pre-production batch of 16 HE-59B1s, which would later be redesignated as the B0. This should not be confused with the prototype HE-59B, which was a land plane, as this design was then abandoned at this point. Though it is a little confusing when aircraft manufacturers decide to make their designations case-sensitive rather than assigning a fresh letter to them. Compared to the prototype, there were some minor equipment changes, and the addition of a 7.9mm MG machine gun in the nose. However, these pre-production models were quickly superseded by the HE-59B2, which was produced by both Heinkel and Arado. Like its predecessors, this version was powered by two 660 horsepower BMW engines, and was of a mixed construction. However, it now had a new all-metal nose with bomb aiming panels, while glazed panels were also fitted for a ventral gunner position, and a similar setup in the dorsal position. In this configuration, the aircraft now had three defensive guns, and a total crew of four, with the nose gunner also acting as bomb aimer. The HE-59 entered Luftwaffe service as a torpedo bomber and maritime patrol aircraft in 1935. Photos suggest that at least some of the pre-production models were brought up to the standard of the HE-59B2. However, records and photographic evidence is pretty sparse on this, so it's very difficult to tell how many of these were actually upgraded. It soon earned a good reputation for its flight handling, being very easy to take off, fly and land. However, it was still considered underpowered, and its range was somewhat limited at just 942 kilometers. This aircraft would see action relatively early in its career, with several units being deployed as part of Germany's Condor Legion during the Spanish Civil War. 
They were used for a mixture of night bombing and anti-shipping patrols, the latter having them equipped with a 20mm cannon in the nose in place of the machine gun. With production of the HE-59B2 established, Heinkel began work on more specialised versions. The first was the HE-59B3, which was a reconnaissance version that sacrificed a gunner position for camera equipment. The HE-59C2 was also without armament, but it was designed to accommodate six dinghies and the required equipment for air-sea rescue. By the outbreak of the Second World War, they had been used successfully in multiple rescue operations. Another reconnaissance version was later developed, designated the E2. Six were built for long-range missions and had three advanced cameras installed. Various models of the HE-59 were also introduced for training purposes. The 59C1 was originally designed for reconnaissance, but was further lightened by stripping it of all weaponry and converted to a training platform. The 59D1 was similar to the C2 model used for sea rescue, but it was used for training pilots, radio operators, and navigators. More advanced training was given with the HE-59N, which had specialist radio equipment, and torpedo dropping was taught with the HE-59E1. By the outbreak of war in 1939, the bomber version had been withdrawn from service, being deemed too obsolete for any direct offensive roles. Due to this, the HE-59 was largely used for maritime reconnaissance and air-sea rescue, equipping squadrons on the coasts of the Baltic and the North Sea. During the early stages of the war, approximately 80 HE-59s were employed by the Luftwaffe, and whilst most were either in reconnaissance or air-sea rescue roles, there were also some specialised units. Early on, the Luftwaffe had foreseen the need to set aside a number of seaplanes for special duties, and a squadron had been formed in 1939 for the purpose of transporting small groups of soldiers to carry out amphibious attacks against hostile shores. Two such minor operations were carried out during the invasion of Poland, but it was during the invasion of Norway that this unit proved its value. In the last three weeks of April 1940, the seaplanes were flown into numerous fjords to deliver parties of up to 50 soldiers, who then paddled ashore in dinghies to secure key objectives. Later, as the German army fought its way northwards, the HE-59s were used to deliver stores, mail, and medical supplies, as well as to evacuate critically wounded soldiers. Though successful in Norway, their most spectacular use was to be carried out on the first day of Germany's invasion of the Netherlands. A key objective on May the 10th was the capture of the twin bridges over the Mars at Rotterdam. At 7am that morning, six HE-59s flew in to deliver 120 assault troops and their dinghies. Though heavy fire brought down four of the planes, the troops were successfully disembarked and they captured their objective with the aid of paratroopers. Later that year, the HE-59 would become one of the lesser-known participants in the Battle of Britain. Scores of them flew rescue missions in the English Channel, picking up to down Luftwaffe pilots, a task that increased in frequency as the air war escalated. For these missions, the aircraft were painted white with red crosses, which would normally protect them from enemy engagement. However, it became known that some of these rescue planes were also radioing the location of British fighter patrols to German bomber formations, and their protection was subsequently revoked. Moreover, at least two of these planes were also shot down whilst laying mines in the Thames estuary, and it was noted that of the score of Heinkels shot down, there was scarcely a crew member who was actually qualified to render basic first aid, let alone deal with serious wounds. After the Battle of Britain petered out, the HE-59 continued to see operational duty until mid-1942, when it was finally retired from active service. Training models continued to be used for another two years, but most were either destroyed or too worn out to be of any use by the time of the Normandy landings. Four aircraft were leased to the Finnish Air Force in 1943, but this was only a short-term affair, and they were returned to Germany after four months. None of these aircraft survived the war, and frankly there isn't a huge photographic record of them either, but their use as a somewhat aggressive ambulance and transport service gives an interesting history to what was otherwise a very uninteresting plane, and I hope you found it interesting as well. As always, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.